Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. How you guys doing? I'm doing well. I am thrilled. I'm excited. I'm happy because I'm finally going to be working on some XJs, baby. Yes. You know what it feels like? It feels like I've been on a long, long road trip, been in hotels month after month, but now I'm home and I get to sleep in my own bed tonight. That's what it feels like to start working on an XJ again. So let's see what's going on here. We got my two-door XJ that I purchased last August. It's almost been a year, and I've done nothing to it so far except take off the front fender. This driver's side fender is now on Beach Jeep. If you've seen the last video, Beach Jeep is in the fabrication shop. Something's going to happen to that. And we got the header panel off. That was destroyed in the wreck. I put that in the garbage. Front bumper destroyed in the wreck. I scrapped that. The radiator was brand new. Um, and that had a big hole in it, so uh, that leaked out all the coolant. That's why I couldn't drive it yet. And, uh, well, the passenger fender, if I could get in here, was completely destroyed and demolished. And the unibody is actually, it's not terrible, but this front uh, section is, uh, is bad. Uh, the tires are bald. I suspect that might be why it's been in an accident. Uh, the hood is shot. And unfortunately, when it took a shot, the uh, the hood busted up this uh, piece of cowl. And uh, this isn't terrible. This is cosmetic. Nothing structural here, so that's pretty good. Let me uh, let me use two hands, and I'll pop open the hood. All right, continuing on. Yes, so this cowl is busted. Uh, the hood is bashed in pretty good, but the hood hardware seems to be okay. The uh, Release um, release lever is intact. Uh, we got these uh, clips. They're all good. Safety release is good. Um, the buffer, what is this thing? The spacer, not broken, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna reuse a lot of this hardware because the stuff on Beach Jeep is rusted. Don't know if I could straighten this out. Um, I don't know, I don't think I need to. Beach Jeep has a, a rusted uh, thingamajiggy, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll use whatever works best, I guess. So that's cool. Uh, coming back down here. So here is some significant unibody damage. Um, if you watched the last video I made of this two-door, um, I believe I explained how Tyler from Bleepin' Jeep, he took an XJ uh, unibody piece, drilled out every single spot weld, and took this part off of uh, a good Cherokee and he fixed uh, Comanche for his daughter. Um, <laughs> these things haven't changed. Uh, I think the whole the whole production of these XJs, they're pretty much uh, the same. Uh, actually, this, this piece is a little different with the, the two different front nose pieces, but um, uh, pretty much the same. So here we go, more damage. This, <laughs> well, you can see how this is all mashed in. It's supposed to come out protrude nice and straight nice right angles here um, goes on to this little support bracket this side completely mangled uh, we got some structural damage in the uniframe right here this could all be straightened out I did this work on General Grievous man I, I could fix this I know I can But uh, I'm not gonna. Um, today's video, we are just gonna let's get this thing running because I really want to drive it. <laughs> Look at this too, man. This is exciting stuff. I know the motor has been well maintained, or at least I hope it is, because this uh, this is a brand new uh, upper radiator hose. We got a brand new lower radiator hose, and again, the uh, radiator was uh, in really, really good condition when uh, when I removed it. Um, it looked new. Unfortunately, it had a, a ring carved in it exactly the same size as this uh, clutch fan. And look, the clutch looks new, and also the thermostat housing looks pretty new. If not, they took it off, cleaned it up, and, and put a new thermostat in it. That's for sure. And uh, I am really liking what I'm seeing on this, so hopefully we can... Uh, start it up we'll go through all the systems we'll make sure this engine runs and we'll see what parts we're going to use from this thing 
Okay, so if the mission for today is to get this two-door running, going to need to get some parts. So I'm uh, going to have to put on a radiator, and I have a radiator down in the basement. All poor 15, all painted really nice. Uh, I got a video on that I made about two years ago. So we could go grab that, put that in. Uh, let's see, we're going to need a battery, obviously. Uh, the wiring in here is intact, although the, um, the uh, little ribbed uh, protector has been... Uh, demolished, but this is our uh, ambient air plug. That's pretty good. Uh, this doesn't have an overhead console, so it doesn't have an ambient air sensor. The uh, battery uh, battery temperature sensor. That's all work works. That's good. The the horn is intact, um, and I actually took the uh, the vacuum ball that was in the front bumper, and I I saved the elbow, <laughs> and I just plugged it right up here. So I guess I'll lay this on top of the battery. Uh, we'll be able to test to see if the cruise control works. Uh, cruise control system is right here. This is intact. And uh, this is interesting. The TV cable <laughs> is not here because, again, this is a, a manual XJ. So that's pretty cool. No TV cable here. Um, fan looks like it works. Electric fan is intact. The uh, shroud did not break, so that's cool. We'll hook that all up. Uh, the only thing we're not going to have is uh, headlights and turn signals. Uh, don't feel like putting that on. Eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> I disconnected the, uh, the headlight harness, uh, the header panel harness, and um, the, connection, the connectors were just bashed in on the passenger side. So uh, I don't know what I did that. I don't know if I threw it out or not. Uh, knowing me, I probably saved it for parts. So it's probably in a bag or a box somewhere. <laughs> if you want to see some parts, let me show you some parts. Uh, you know what, we'll give this thing a walk around too real quick. So here is about a quarter of my XJ parts. So let's check out my, uh, my tent. Yeah. Yeah. Dana 44, I'm a Dana Dolly. <laughs> Just endless XJ parts. I can't wait to get this project, my big project, built so I can get rid of all these parts. So here we go, here's a walk around of the two door. And we're gonna take a time out for the airplane again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Here we are, my two door again. We got the auction number on this nice, long, luxurious, sexy two door glass. I love that. Uh, let's see, everything in the back is perfect. And again, that's why I bought this, the, uh, the whole idea of getting this two-door XJ was to uh, supplement my beach jeep project so this will get a lot of use um, but again this video I just want to get this thing running I want to make sure everything works on it I'd like to give it a little drive so we'll see if we could drive it make sure the uh, clutch works the transmission works everything shifts properly look at that Stock two-door 99 XJ. Headline is pretty good too. Uh, I took the rear seat out because I had to take some measurements of the back, which is, uh, again, part of my plan. Even the lift gate struts work. Beautiful two-door inside, nice and clean. I didn't even go through this thing. There's still original owner paperwork. And this is one of the best features, is uh, cup holders back here for the kids on both sides that will be utilized for the Beach Jeep project. So, all right, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna get me some parts. <laughs> Found it. Here we have my XJ condenser, my XJ radiator, and a bag of hardware. Everything pres pressure tested and freshly painted. So yeah, uh, yeah, it did a pretty thorough job. This was meant to go in my beach Jeep and um, yeah, looks like we're gonna test it uh, in here. So that's cool. Uh, this is parts from a 90, no, a 2000 and 2001 and it's gonna fit nicely in the 99 because well, XJs are all the same. Uh, the only issue is gonna be this uh, radiator support bracket mount on the unibody, it's about three inches pushed in, and uh, it should be parallel with this one over here. So maybe I'll take a sledgehammer and beat it out a little bit, just so 
it doesn't uh, make the uh, radiator collide with the fan. So I'll go ahead and massage it a little bit. All right, let the massaging begin. <laughs> Deja vu. I feel like I just did this on a ZJ. <laughs> Actually, not too bad. It helps that it's warm out. It's about 80 degrees. If you're gonna do this in cold weather, I highly recommend you preheat it, like the ZJ. So, a couple more taps, we should be good. All right, made some room for the uh, battery. That's a good thing. <laughs> Actually, loosened up a piece of uh, old headlight glass. So, yeah. That was in there. Uh, not bad. It's, uh, well, <laughs> it's definitely not great. It's still ugly and uh, it's not going to be perfect. But you know what? At least uh, the radiator support bracket will line up now and it won't interfere with the, uh, the fan anymore. So good enough for government work. All right. Let's go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll drop this bad boy in. Actually, I already have a condenser here, so I'll have to take that one out. All right, radiator's gonna go in, and gonna want to put in these rubber bushings. These drop right in these frame holes over here, either side. Then what we're gonna do is line up the good condenser right over those holes. We're gonna drop the radiator. Well, first make sure that petcock is tightened. Good. Do it while you can get to it, right? We're gonna slide the radiator. Right on into these holes. Now we'll feel on the bottom for those little pegs to go right into those grommets. There's one. And there is two. Beautiful. Radiator is in. Uh, one other thing you can do now is slide in your fan into the little fan slots. There we go. Nice and firm. Okay, let me go ahead and tighten these 11 millimeters down. Cool. And we'll put the uh, rad support on. <laughs> I got my hardware all set up on this bag. Ah, good stuff. Remind me not to lose that. I'm gonna need that in a couple months. Give us a little love. Put my 10 millimeter deep dish. Well, I get my 10 millimeter out. I'm gonna put on the radiator fan. Now, I believe these are originally M6 bolts for the uh, the electric fan. Uh, when I refurbished this radiator support bracket, I went ahead and used the um, fender clips. These uh, fender clip nuts that are. M8 threads with a big uh, 10 millimeter head on instead of those stupid little uh, 8 millimeter heads that just rust away. So we've got some nice meaty hardware on here and man this is working great. I'm excited. I'm glad I did this making this project nice and easy. I'm just snugging on this electric fan. Let's see what I saved myself. Thank you, Dan from the past. <laughs> Dan in the future is going to love you. There's two. There's three and four. Yeah, there we go. That's nice and square. And we got plenty of clearance, Clarence. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? While we're up here, we'll go ahead and put on the upper rad hose. This nice, beautiful new hose. Then I'm also gonna try to get down in here, put on the lower rad hose. Um, if you're wondering why I might be missing a couple connections, 
or if you are wondering, uh, you are correct. There is no transmission lines on this XJ because it is a manual. So um, I did not have to hook those up. So that's cool. Um, I really like not having transmission lines. I think I'm going to uh, <laughs> use the manual transmission from here on out. Uh, yeah, baby. There we go. I think I got it. All right, we're missing uh, we're missing one hose, the uh, the overflow line. Um, let me see if I can find one. We're gonna go over to this uh, wall of XJ parts. Um, and I saw one here before. Yes, here we go. <laughs> A bunch of cool. I think this is the one of six that I have. I probably have another, at least two, in my basement. But I'm glad I found one here because I hate crawling through a crawl space full of parts. It is annoying. Hose clamp. <laughs> That's got a lot of good. This seems uh seems shorter. This one probably ripped off at some point. Oh well, not gonna need it for long. Alright, here we go. This baby's got a ton of oil, and this oil is, this is brand new. This guy must have done maintenance on this thing, literally right before he crashed it. So it's full of oil, it's new. Um, I also was thinking about taking off these spark plugs and shooting a little bit of lubricant into the cylinders, but uh, again, this thing has been sheltered. Uh, this whole thing is rust-free, so I don't think anything's seized in that. Maybe uh, I'll put in some fresh gas, see if I can pump out the old, Put in some new gas only lasts about three months so i think i will go ahead and do the uh do the gas uh gas swap just a little bit i don't want a full tank when i take this apart um battery terminals look like junk but i'll give them a good cleaning and uh let's see let's see what battery we're gonna use um not sure what battery i should use but i'll tell you what battery i'm not gonna use <laughs> probably use the uh, the smaller one let's try a Bosch I'm gonna try to get this five-year-old Bosch battery in here uh, I put a charge on it last night so it should be good um, not even gonna mess with that Optima because you guys know how I feel about Optima they suck so thunderstorm afternoon thunderstorm and uh, put a little damper well it made everything damper <laughs> so I'm gonna resume our starting of the two-door project right now okay so I got this little uh, Allen head bolt got some washers on it and a nut I think this bolt was from uh, from the uh, the old crib the baby crib um, I think they give you an extra if not uh, well that would explain why the crib was a little rickety <laughs> um, no I'm just kidding the crib crib was sturdy so yeah all right contact this tank is empty anyway so since this tank is empty I'm just gonna put maybe a gallon of fresh gas in there Not too much, don't want to waste it. I'm gonna be dropping this gas tank soon anyway. Ugh, put the cap back on. Don't want an EVAP check engine light, right? <laughs> All right, these terminals are nice and tight. This one obviously was changed out. This one is still a factory terminal. And here is, <laughs> again, my relocated uh, vacuum ball. I'm just going to uh, rest this in here and just plug it right over here. 
there. Hopefully that'll give me enough vacuum pressure to uh, hold for uh, things such as uh, cruise control and whatnot. Again, engine oil is good. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the spark plugs. We got battery. We got uh, good gas. We got our radiator on. Now we're going to add the coolant. Fifty-fifty. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. All right, oh, using the ignition. Ah, excellent. All right, clutch and key. He's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Woohoo! Neutral. Come on. Steady out. Gotta get that uh, mass air meter going. Let her know she's alive. Radio's on. Look at this guy, stock radio. <laughs> stock, beautiful. Who wants a stock XJ radio? 99 bass, tape deck, yeah, Chrysler baby. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating in here. Let's see if the windows work. Look at that, two door window buttons. Nice mirror, not heated. Hello, me. Let's go this one down. Cool. She sounds great. All right, let's back off the gas, see if she idles. Oh, yeah. That's all her, baby. Smooth idle. Check this out. Yes. All right, I do not have a fan shroud, so caution fan. Power steering pump sounds a little iffy. Smells like burning oil. She's covered in it. Probably, uh, oh yeah, definitely leaky valve cover gasket. Battery was good, nice. The vacuum ball. What else, let's take a look at this thing. Got its AC cap on. Let's see if she's got any pressure in it. Again, the condenser didn't look bashed, so. Alright. We might have AC, guys. This would be the first XJ that I've had with AC in it. <laughs> Probably a decade. Let's check these gauges. How are we doing on oil pressure? Oil pressure perfect. Temperatures rising. Rising, rising, rising. <laughs> Fuel is halfway. All right. I guess I don't know how to siphon for crap. <laughs> Battery is on point. Looks like the alternator is charging. This beast has got 185,000 miles. 220, of course. Cool. Let's see. Headlights. Well, obviously, headlights don't work because <laughs> I don't have anything hooked up. Um, but up, up, uh, Let's see. Yes, AC. Cold. We'll go, uh,. Max AC, full blast. Oh, 
Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Ice cold AC. Ho ho ho. That's awesome. Awesome guys. Oh, this is great. What a sweet little two door. So sweet. See if the uh, mirrors work. Power mirrors. <laughs> Power mirrors work. Still got to rev it up. Wants to stall out. We'll see if it could correct itself in a little bit. You know what would be great right now? The uh, extended idle button. Throw the switch and it grounds the uh, that gray number 12 pin at the PCM. And that bumps the RPMs from 800 up to about 1,000. So that would be awesome. We'll definitely throw an extended idle button in, uh, in my new XJ build. Let's see, what else? We got the rear hatch button on. Check that out. The power steering looks a little shoddy. Maybe that's why it's making noise. We'll uh, throw some fluid in that. Stay on, baby. Yes. Hey, hey, hey look, we still got the Band-Aid. <laughs> that Band-Aid has been on here from day one. Oh my goodness. Happy little four liter. Yeah, it's just filled. Probably just on its way out. Any brake fluid left? Uh oh. That is empty. Wonder if this thing had a brake failure. Ooh. I'll check that out. See if I have brake fluid. Oh yeah. AC is cold. Loving it. Check the tailgate. I think I know why that that don't work. Yeah, guys. Right there. That'll get you every time. So I bet you, bet you the rear wiper don't work. The rear defrost probably don't work. And this thing ain't never gonna know it's closed. the wiper on. Nothing. Rear defrost lights up, so we got the indicator, so the switch is good, but <laughs> how much you want to bet that don't work either? All right. <laughs> I'm so happy that this thing is running. This is great. Uh, I really want to drive it. I want to drive it in the worst way, but it's getting dark. It's about eight o'clock at night and um, no headlights, no nothing. So maybe in the morning I'll, uh, I'll sneak it out and <laughs> take it around the block. Gotta know how it's shifting, right? You know, gotta make sure the clutch works and the trans works because hey, I'm gonna use that for my uh, XJ build. So I'm gonna have to drive it. Yeah, so you know what? I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm not gonna close this one out. I'm confident we'll get this thing on the road.
<laughs> Check it out. I know I said I wasn't gonna put the header panel on, but I figured, what the hell? I figured, what the hell? That's right, guys. We're gonna take this baby for a spin. We got the headlights on, they are working. We also got the flashers on, so we know the signals work. Quick walk around, quick pre-flight checklist. Here it is, guys. There it is, there it is. Working. All right, let's get this baby on the road. Can't wait. Here he comes. Make way. <laughs> beep, beep. Who got the keys to the Jeep? Vroom. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> We're doing it. All right. <laughs> hey, I just noticed something right there. So uh, every time I step on the brake, we got the uh, defrost light going on. <laughs> That's definitely a sign of broken wires and a rear lift gate boot. So I think I showed you that yesterday. But yep, uh, that's really the only problem with this vehicle. That and the uh, uniframes a little damaged in the front and we don't have fenders, but that is not a problem. We do not need any of that right now. So here we go. Let's shift these gears, baby. <laughs> this clutch pedal is very light considering I'm used to driving the Mustang. That clutch weighs like a thousand pounds. Clutch pressure on this is absolutely nothing to shift. So, wow. This is my first drive in a manual XJ. This is fantastic. I'm loving it. It's so much fun. And I got the windows up because the AC works. This is just glorious, guys. It is just really, really nice to be able to drive in some AC. So cold. It's probably colder than the uh, Commander. So here we go. We even got a shift light, baby. That's awesome. I have never seen that light illuminated in an XJ gauge cluster before. So that's pretty cool to see. All right, I'm gonna turn here and I'll uh, bang through the gears and see what we can do. See how this baby feels. doing 40 just want to see it work um, again tires are bald uninspected uninsured unregistered uh, I'm scared to say more because I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> but man this is a pleasure to drive I am loving this thing I'm so happy so the first day I got this thing I started it up but there was no cool in it so I didn't want to drive it I gave you a little fakie down the driveway I backed out pulled it in just to get a feel for it but I didn't drive it um, I did uh, well everything you saw I got the cooling in the new radiator um, actually my refurbished radiator got that in um, put the battery in I put some brake fluid in I put some fresh gasoline in it what else did I do yeah um, I don't know got the header panel on obviously got the lights working and um, man that's it guys um, I have big plans for this, so uh, stay tuned for more uh, two-door beach jeep work. Uh, this thing's going to get stripped down, and then uh, we're going to be taking this to pull the fabricator as well. So I'm probably not going to be driving this much more. There's no point to it. Um, we gotta, we got to do a lot, a lot of work to it before we get this where we want it. But my XJ build, I promise you, will include this uh, five speed it will also have four wheel drive this obviously doesn't and uh, we're gonna do a 4.0 and I'm gonna try to do it with the uh, the coil packs I want to use the 2000 2001 wiring and um, we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this so um, all right guys I'm gonna close this out right here on the road so thank you so much for watching guys I really appreciate it remember to like and subscribe and as always 
Peace.